Melissa McHale. I um, am an endometriosis surgeon in the um, greater DC area. And I was recently asked, how is endometriosis diagnosed? So the gold standard for diagnosis is we do surgery, we take out some tissue, and the pathologist looks at it under a microscope and confirms, yes, we see endometriosis. There are other ways to suspect endometriosis. The most common is if there's imaging, like an ultrasound or an MRI, that has evidence of endometriosis on the imaging. So that could be endometriomas, or commonly known as chocolate cysts, or structural changes of endometriosis, like nodularity to the bowel, for example. Those findings, although they're not, they don't meet the gold standard diagnosis of pathology, they are very, very consistent with endometriosis. And so we can make a presumed diagnosis that way. The last way that we diagnose it is based on clinical symptoms. In that case, it's what we call a suspected diagnosis. That's someone who has pain that can be either chronic or cyclic. Sometimes it's chronic but exacerbated cyclically. Sometimes the pain has been going on from the beginning of someone's periods. Sometimes it's a more recent development. Other supporting clinical things can be changes to someone's bowel habits or GI symptoms like chronic constipation or IBS type symptoms, bladder symptoms such as urgency, frequency, going in the night, often being diagnosed with UTIs that don't actually have bacteria in them or pain with intercourse. So these are all things that add up to a high clinical suspicion for endometriosis. And then even when we don't see it on imaging, we're able to say someone has a suspected diagnosis of endometriosis, and that's what prompts us to offer a patient surgery.